Do you see how thick it gets? Oh my god. Alright guys, before we jump in, I just wanted to let you know there is a brand new vegan health and fitness bundle. This bundle is a collection of over 60 vegan ebooks regarding health and fitness, and it includes my Everyday Asian Recipes ebook as well. If you buy each ebook separately, this bundle would cost over $1,300, but today you can get it for only $50. This is a 96% discount, guys. It's super exciting. There's tons of recipes, fitness routines, meal plans, and so, so much more. So if you're looking for some vegan resources, make sure you check out the link down below to grab the bundle before it expires. So it's only going to be available for a week. Make sure you check it out. And uh, yeah, let's jump back into the video. Hey guys, it's Rose and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another video. Today is another episode of Munching Mondays, which is my mukbang series. Mukbang is an eating show, so we're gonna eat together, we're gonna chat. And today, guys, we are also doing a cookbang. So we are cooking and we're eating. So it's been a while since we've cooked together as well. So uh, yeah, hopefully you guys are excited. Let's get started. All right, so I already have some water. I've got about, um, I think this is about half a liter of water that is like semi-boiling. I'm just gonna turn it up again so as you guys can see by the title we're gonna be making some Korean spicy rice cakes I have not had this in so long so I'm really excited let's let's just do it I'm kind of just gonna wing it I haven't made it in a while but um we can do this okay so I've got like recipes for this on my YouTube channel I also have a recipe for this in my everyday Asian recipes ebook linked down below for this version because I want to quickly make it we're actually gonna make a quick kelp broth you don't have to do this but it'll enhance the flavors. So this is kelp powder, and I'm just gonna throw in, maybe this is about like a teaspoon or half a teaspoon. Just gonna throw that into this water, and then let's just kind of mix that. Usually, if I had more time, I would take some dry kelp and boil it with the water, but ain't nobody got time. So I do this hack very often when I wanna make a kelp broth, uh, and I don't wanna bother with, um, actually making the kelp broth because this comes in a nice powder form and you can just throw it into the water. So we're gonna bring this to a nice boil. So I realized I didn't really explain what I'm making. So today we're making tteokbokki, which is spicy Korean rice cakes. And it's a really popular dish in Korea and you can make it in lots of different ways, but today we're gonna make it my way. The way that I make it changes every single time I make it. So this might turn out to be a bit of a soup tteokbokki situation. So anyways, we have this kelp broth going. While this is coming back to a boil, I'm gonna add other ingredients, cause you know, whatever. So I have some minced garlic. I'm gonna add in like, I don't know, maybe like a tablespoon of minced garlic. And let's add in our sauce ingredients. So the most important ingredient is gochujang, yay. So this is Korean red pepper paste. It's basically the most important ingredient ever. So it is this very thick paste. And normally I would mix the sauce ingredients in a separate, um, bowl, but ain't nobody got time. Let's just throw it in. It's very thick, which is why you probably want to mix it separately, but because there's nothing else in here, it'll just thin out in this water. So I'm just going to let this melt in this water. I might need a little bit more later. I added in approximately like two tablespoons. I'm going to add a little bit more later, but let's just add that in there. We're also going to add in some kochu garu, which is Korean chili pepper flakes. So this is basically like the powder or flaky version of the kochujang. This is kochu garu, okay? So maybe about a tablespoon. If you don't have the kochu garu, you can just use more kochujang. All right, guys, it's been a while since we cooked. Like I've been really lazy with the cook cooking uh, mukbang videos, but I know you guys really like these, so here we go. Okay, mm. see that red? Oh, love that color. Come on, come to a boil for me. Why won't you come to a boil? Is it sun? And tamari. So this is soy sauce, basically. Why did I cover it up? I'm not sure. All right, so now we're gonna add some uh, industrial-sized soy sauce. We're gonna add like a tablespoon of soy sauce. This is tamari, but that's basically soy sauce. We're gonna add that. Mm. You know what? I already know I'm gonna need another tablespoon of this, so why not just add it now? Kuchu dang! Whoo! This is what it looks like for those of you that don't know. Come on, come to a boil. This is taking forever. All right, and then last thing I'm gonna add in here is some maple syrup. Let's just add 
about one tablespoon of that in here. Oh, I have this thing. Mm. All right, I'm gonna cover this up and let's pour our drink. We've got my ice and guess what guys? Of course we got the bubbly. Uh, <laughs> I am having my favorite grapefruit bubbly. Yay! Come on. Oh, I think it's starting to boil. Today, I thought we would continue our vegan discussions because you guys really enjoy this. And I have so many different topics to get through because a lot of you guys have asked me my opinion on so many things. Um, I'm glad you guys uh, want my opinion on these things. I mean, whoever knew people cared about my opinion. <laughs> We've already discussed a few things in the last, like I think two mukbangs that I did. And um, yeah, I thought we would continue because a lot of you guys have asked me to discuss various different topics regarding veganism. So yeah. No, 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 no. Okay, but let's cook first. Okay, <laughs> starting to kind of boil, guys. It's starting to happen. Things are starting to happen. Things are starting to happen a little bit. Do you see that? I'm just gonna add the ingredients. You know what? F it. Onion. We've got about half an onion sliced thinly. Ooh. We've got two vegan hot dogs. This is from Eve's, the veggie hot dogs. Ooh. Now I'm probably making about two servings, maybe even three. <laughs> Three normal size servings, maybe two servings for me. May not even, one and a half servings for me. And then we have baby bok choy. So you can use cabbage instead, but I just had baby bok choy and, and it actually goes really well with tteokbokki. And of course, the rice cakes. Now I only have these rice cakes, the flat ones, but normally you would use the cylinder shaped ones, but it's, I mean, it's the same thing. It's just different shapes. So we have about 200 grams of rice cakes and about three heads of baby bok choy. And um, there we go. And then I'm gonna cover this up to allow it to come to a boil again. <laughs> Super simple, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna add a couple more things in a little bit, but um, let's start with that. All right. Ooh. Ooh. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, I had to take it to the stove, like my actual stove to get it to boil because it was taking forever. And homegirl does not like to wait. Okay, so basically guys, as you can see here, it is now boiling and what happens is once, as the rice cakes start to cook, the soup becomes thicker, okay? So it kind of creates a very thick liquid because the starch from the rice cakes is released, okay? But I thought it'd be fun also to add some rice noodles. This is just a kind of like a Vietnamese style rice noodle and these are instant rice noodles. Thought it'd be fun to add this in here. So let's do that. You can also add like ramen noodles and stuff, or you can just not add noodles, it's up to you. You can also add like udon noodles, yum. All right, so it's starting to really come together nicely. Yay! Mm. Mm. All right. I'm gonna add my green onions. I've got two stalks of green onions. I'm gonna add a bit. I'll add more later. Mmm. Oh, I think the rice noodles were a great idea. Mmm, <laughs> can you guys see how, how good it looks? All right, let me just try a rice cake because I'm curious if it's cooked or not. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. It's definitely cooked. It's very, I think this one's a different kind of rice cake. It's very um, sticky. It's more sticky than usual. Mmm, the soup is perfect. It's nice and spicy, guys. All right, I'm just gonna dig in because I wanna eat. See, this one's very soupy. Ooh, I don't know how to eat this. Yum. Mm. 
Mmm. Bok choy goes so well with the duck bok green. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Let's try some of the rice noodles. Mmm. So good. Mmm, yum, yum. I'm so happy. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit, but still keep it going. Oh my god, guys, I'm gonna eat this so fast. Let me look at this. Look at this. Kind of wish I had the cylinder shaped ones. <laughs> but these are just as good. So I was just looking through some of your topic suggestions and a very common theme I get when, you know, when we're talking about vegan topics is people asking me how to deal with family and friends and how to deal with like social pressure and social situations. So I thought I would maybe talk about that just throughout this video. Vegan hot dog. Mm. As I always say, the most difficult part about going vegan is dealing with social situations. That is genuinely, for most people, that is the most difficult part because we are very social creatures. So we need to be able to feel like we fit in in society. We don't want to feel like the outcast. Some of the most common questions I get is how do I deal with my family? How do I deal with my friends? How do I deal with, you know, colleagues? The thing is, I think it's hardest initially, right? Because people like your friends and family are confused. When you first go vegan, you're like telling them about a big change that you're making and they're not used to that. So I think a lot of that, I guess, negativity comes from confusion and just like you, I don't know, like you changing. People are not comfortable with people changing, okay? <laughs> and I think a lot of it also comes from insecurities and feeling like they're being personally attacked even though they're not. But, because if you're saying that you're making a moral stance to stop eating animal products, then they look at themselves as well. Like people will think about, oh, like they kind of like tend to become defensive because they're thinking, oh my God, like, are they judging me, you know? Or should I be doing something? Mm. See, do you see how thick it gets? Oh my God. I'm so glad I added these noodles. Ooh. Ooh. Especially in the beginning, they feel like hypocrites, probably, right? Because somebody they know that's not some weirdo, okay? Somebody they know has decided to make an ethical lifestyle decision. You know, it's very uncomfortable. So I think a lot of people get defensive because of that, because they want to defend their lifestyle. 
because they feel personally attacked, even though it doesn't have anything to do with them. But it's very hard to separate that, you know? Mm. And I think also, in the very beginning, you're like a lot more passionate. Because you're like first finding out about this, you're first kind of maybe... I don't know, you just, you're just a little bit, I, I find that when people first go vegan, they're the most passionate at that time. Cause it's like, oh my God, I've discovered this like, this thing and you know, the world is a terrible place and I have to make a change and you just kind of get really like into it. And it's not that like long-term vegans aren't into it, of course, but there's a lot of learning that you still do even after you go vegan about how to, you know, talk to people about this, about how to socialize. So I think that there's a learning curve. Mm. So I think first thing is that recognize that when you first go vegan, you are probably gonna have some sort of a pushback from your family and your friends. They're also concerned about you. They probably think, oh, like you need protein or something. <laughs> mm. Guys, this is so good. I know I said this is for two servings, but <laughs> who here feels like I can eat it all? Who? The rice noodles were such a good idea. Look at this. It works because this just soaks. Up. Whoa, 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 whoa! Come on. This just soaks up the sauce so well. Um. Anyway, so. So anyway, so in the beginning it's hard because a you want to share it with everybody. You kind of want to talk to everybody about this. But then also, people are very defensive and they don't want to hear it. You know what I mean? So, you kind of have this clash. For me now, what I try to do is not bring it up unless it was asked of me or if we're talking about something related. Mm -hmm. There's some rice cake and some rice noodle here. Oh my God, it's so good. Rice noodle, rice cake, and a hot dog. Woo! Mm. So yeah, I try just to not talk about things unless it's asked of me. Cause otherwise, you know, they think you're trying to like preach to them. You know what I mean? Even though I know, I know what it's like. When you go out for dinner, usually the vegans are not the ones that are like, hi, I'm vegan. <laughs> like, I usually don't even say the word vegan unless like I have to, or I'm at like a vegetarian restaurant. Then it's a bit different because like they know what vegan is. Otherwise, sometimes I don't find that it's necessary to say I'm vegan. I just kind of like explain what I don't eat. I'm sweating. So if someone, you know, is rude about it, 
I would just say something like, don't worry, I'm not asking you to go vegan. I'm just vegan or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, yo, I'm not, I'm not here to like force you to go vegan. I'm just here existing and you, you have a problem with my existence. That's not my problem. Mm. Genuinely, after a while, they just kind of accept it. People around you. I mean, they'll still poke fun once in a while, you know? They'll make some stupid jokes. That'll probably never end. But that's okay, you just shrug it off, you laugh it off. You realize you know better. <laughs> and that's the whole point. I mean, if you're vegan, like, you know better, right? So, if you know better, there's no point of arguing. There's no point of getting, getting upset if they're, like, making fun of you. Obviously, within reason. I'm, like, literally dripping sweat. I don't know if you guys can see. But this is so good. Oh my god, you guys. <laughs> Two servings? Excuse me, what? Ooh, I'm getting like, no. I got this all over my body. So yeah, I mean, Basically, the moral of the story is I try not to get into discussing unless we're having a productive conversation. Mm. If somebody I'm talking to really wants to know or is curious, then yeah, of course I'm gonna have a conversation with them. You know? But also, I'm not doing that expecting them to change at that moment. You know? There's something called planting the seed. The fact that you're having a conversation with them, that's planting the seed. I've had lots of instances where a seed was planted in my brain in terms of the way that I was thinking. It started with my philosophy class, where I learned about speciesism, the concept of animal rights from a philosophical point of view. And I was like, whoa, this makes so much sense. Hmm? And that was the first seed that was planted. But did I go vegan then? No. Have conversations with people if it's productive. If it's not, try to avoid it. Try not to talk about it too much. At least that's what I do. Obviously everyone, you know, you can do whatever feels comfortable for you, you know? Basically what I want, I want people to realize that, you know, I'm just a normal average person and I'm vegan. Like you don't have to, become a tree-hugging hippie or whatever it is that the vegan stereotype is. You know, I'm just a regular person, you know, and I care about animals and I care about these issues, but I can still go out and have meals with my friends, have normal conversations, have intellectual conversations, So, yeah. I can eat tteokbokki. Mm. I'm starting to get really full, but this is so good. I'm telling you guys, if you haven't tried tteokbokki, It's the bomb dog home. I really, I genuinely didn't think I could actually finish this. But who was I kidding? Mm. 
have you guys ever eaten so much that you like couldn't move? Not that this is what I'm experiencing right now, but I just thought of this one time. This is bef before I went vegan. I went to some kind of all you can eat sushi place. This is why I don't usually like to go to all you can eat because I feel like I like have to eat it all, <laughs> you know? I feel like I need to eat everything. Um, but this is like when I was a teenager and I was also really bad at like controlling, not that I'm good at controlling my food, but I feel like now I wouldn't eat until I was like dying, you know? But at that time I remember I ate like so much of food that I was like literally in pain. Like it was like a binge, it was like a binge eating episode. Really full. <laughs> Is this normal? Seriously. Like, if I didn't care about, you know, my health or keeping relatively good shape, <laughs> I, I could be a competitive eater probably. But I really don't like that, you know? It's just not, no. I probably could do it, but I wouldn't. <laughs> I'm so wetting. Woo! Guys, it's hot. It's hot. It's hard to do. Look at, look. Do you see how sweaty my hair is? <laughs> well, I destroyed that, didn't I? Wow. So, guys, um, one serving, not two servings. <laughs> one rose sized serving. That was so good. And um, yeah, I'm like comfortably full, but like not super full. Ah, guys, where does my appetite come from? So yeah, um, I don't know if that was an informative conversation, but I actually have some other videos where I just sit and talk, where I talk about, you know, socializing as a vegan and, and stuff like that. So I'm gonna link those down below if you guys are interested in me discussing that further. Because well, I think A, it's important that you guys realize that like you're not the only one that feels potentially isolated or feels, you know, like the loner vegan or something like that because everyone feels like that, I think. Almost everybody, unless you're surrounding yourself with vegans, which is very unlikely, you know, you're gonna be the odd one out. And that's the unfortunate part. But uh, remember that you're not alone and you are basically a leader in this, you know, vegan world right now. Like the world is still not that vegan. So if you're vegan right now, be proud, be happy, and realize that you are at least attempting to make the world a better place. Like, isn't that, you know, it's not what we should all aim for, you know, even just the attempt, you know, I feel like that's important. You know, the attempt at being a better person, the attempt at trying to make the world a better place, the attempt to help animals. I mean, it's amazing. So it's really unfortunate that we're still in a, in a world where vegans are still mocked and they're still ridiculed and they're still made fun of, even though, you know, I mean, we have pure intentions. Like we want to help animals and we want to make this world a better place, not just for animals, but also for humans. Anyways. Yeah, that's it. That was my mukbang. I, <laughs> ah, of course I finished it all. Even as I was saying, I don't think I'll be able to finish this. I kind of knew in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'll probably still finish it. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below your thoughts on this topic. If you have any tips on, you know, surviving the family uh, conversations when you go vegan, anything like that, let us know down below because I'm sure someone will find that helpful. Yeah, let's continue the discussion in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, of course, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.